The jagged in his tongue, typically blunted and softened by the warmth in his tone, could remove gravity from a room. His feet, cemented in the ugly beauty of it all, his mouth an open museum, sliding over pain like a roller over spikes, would somehow, would somehow make the brutal less stab, less rip and tear, more fold and crease. But there's no beauty here. There's no under the skin to discover, no paintbrush in this landscape, just canvas, plain and empty, raw textile. So in the dark, when I can hide my trembling fatherhood away from her question marks, I recall his song. And I imagine, what of the now? What of today? How would the serrated choke of his vocal cords be absent any hue? It would be just stark. It would be dry like licking talcum off the palm, chalky like how when struck, lightning tries to ground itself through muscles. The pain would be muted. The struggle would not be the rhythmed ocean we've grown accustomed to drown in. This, this, this poem would be pure suffocation, heavy. Submerged, but not even wet, more, more of an overcoming, an echoing canyon deafened by the sound of rain. It's, it's what I'd imagine God felt like when creating deserts. This song, this song would be of war returning to the soldier. It would be mothers with detonating wombs spilling in the hands of their children. This poem would be written in expired timer and cursive fuse. If Jill Scott Herring was still here, to hear, if he was to see how the scraped and scrapped wood of cotton gins have been repurposed to construct gavels, I'd imagine he'd be more bottles overhead than living in them. Stones over sticks, more riot over freedom song, drumbeat scream over Negro spiritual. I'd imagine he'd be a naked hip that once held a snub nose, melting the asphalt with a triggered tongue, reciting an armory I can't be certain. But I'm sure, I'm pretty sure, it'd be the hardest poem I'd ever have to decipher. <laughs>